Well, good morning, dear ones. Glad to have you with me this morning on some good seeds. Uh, if you've watched any of the videos in the last few weeks, uh, you can tell by the background that I'm not at home. Uh, I'm here in Wolf Point, Montana. We are uh, spent the night with uh, Jeannie's sister and uh, we are getting ready to head up to Luster, which is about a half an hour drive from here. And we are going to have our first Sunday as pastors of the Luster Evangelical Mennonite Brethren Church. Uh, we're so looking forward to that. We are uh, in the process of moving, getting our stuff together, and uh, we'll make a couple of trips back and forth before we get our final move up there. I apologize again, uh, well, not again, I apologize for the lighting. It's uh, earlier here. And uh, at any rate, we're glad to, have, glad to have you with me this morning. And our reading today is Ezra chapter one, Psalm 84 and 85 and Luke chapter seven. And the verses that I want to read, uh, a couple of them actually, but it's a, a great seed to plant this morning. Ezra, or Psalm chapter 85, verses 4 through 8. Restore us, O God of our salvation, and cause your anger toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. The psalmist asks three questions and makes a plea for mercy in this, uh, in this chapter. Uh, the first question relates to the anger of the Lord because of, uh, because of sin. Uh, the third comes in the form of a plea for revival, and, and that's followed then by a prayer for mercy and salvation. And then he waits for the answer from the Lord and to, that God is going to speak to him in his situation. The questions that are asked are, are not questions of, uh, of doubt or unbelief, but, but out of a brokenness because of the sins of the people, and then a recognition that they are in fact God's people and that there are many promises that are unbreakable. And on the basis of those promises, he pleads for mercy and for salvation for the people and for himself. I love the fact that having asked those questions, he waits in hope for a response from the Lord to those questions. He's confident that the Lord will answer. And then, then, and then the rest of the Psalm, he expresses that confidence. And that confidence is based on the knowledge of the Lord and of God's faithfulness. And I think as I, as I contemplate that, that, that should give each and every one of us that same kind of confidence in the Lord. There is then a strong warning to the children of Israel, and that warning is <laughs> it's on the basis of their history. He says, don't turn back to their previous foolishness, to their folly. In other words, don't repeat the cycle that they have walked in for centuries. Their history is a, is a history of a, of a repeated downward cycle that they have walked in and that spiral that consisted of going astray after God had brought deliverance to them. And then they became complacent and backslid into folly, into idolatry, into foolishness. And oh, how we need to pay heed to that today. Uh, we are living in perilous times as the Apostle Paul spoke of. And in the, in the face of all of those perilous times, it's easy for us to become complacent too, as uh, John says in chapter two of his epistle, first epistle, uh, to not love the world nor the things that are in the world. And we become complacent and, and loving the things of this life more than we love the Lord. It's not that we, we don't believe or trust God's word or believe God's word, but we just have not put it in a place of the priority that we need to place it in our lives. So my appeal to us this morning, my plea is, let us get back to the word. Let us understand what God is saying so that we might walk in the truth and in the light of his word to be the people in this dark world that we need to be. Lights. We are the light of the world, Jesus said. He's the light and he has given us that same light that we be light to the people around us. May God bless us and help us to do that. May we walk away from those things that distract from that goal, from the sin, as the Hebrew writer says, that so easily besets us. And may we be the people that God has called us to be. Pray that the Lord will bless you today in all that you do. And I'd appreciate any prayers that you could offer on our behalf as we go to begin our pastoral ministry again uh, here in Luster, Montana at the EMB Church. May the Lord richly bless you today, I pray. Amen.